four tips for the Newmark BJ to go to touch and DJ Pro. So the first tip is going to be to immediately remap these two buttons. These are the headphone buttons and this app automatically selects the headphones for you. So it's completely useless to waste these perfectly good light up buttons for the headphones. So what you could do is go press the middle button and then go to settings, MIDI devices, select your device, press the headphone button, and then where it says deck two, we could change this really quick. And now this perfectly good button that was useless before now can be used for our effects. The next thing is going to be to don't frustrate don't frustrate yourself trying to get the BPM exactly right for beat matching. I, I know a lot of people think real DJing is DJing with the BPM slider to match up the beats, and I'm sure you're very good at it and can do it, but don't stress yourself out because these BPM sliders, although they did give us BPM sliders, they are really small, and the smaller the BPM slider, the harder it is going to be to fine tune the BPM. So, so we have two tracks here. I changed the BPM. So now if you want to get the exact same BPM, all you have to do is press the sync button once. And now both tracks are exactly, exactly the same BPM and you didn't have to go all the way up like this. And now you could still manually beat match and manually blend the songs together and just press sync off. So now sync is off and we have the exact same BPM. So I really, that's, that makes it so much easier and don't try to fiddle with these because it's hard. It is possible, but it is really hard to do. Next is going to be to invest in a high quality USB-C adapter or a lightning cable adapter if you're doing this on your phone. Because if you get like a cheap one, maybe like an off-brand one from Amazon or something like this one, then the connection could be spotty. Sometimes when I'm using it, it'll cut out and that is definitely not good when you're DJing, especially if you're doing a gig. The next thing is that this one doesn't charge the iPad. So now this controller is running off the battery of your iPad. And if you're using the phone, some phones may require you to have it plugged in. So you're going to be using more battery than you would normally use. And you use a lot of battery when you're DJing because there's so much stuff going on and the screen has to be bright. So now you're powering the whole screen, the whole app, all of that. You could be powering streaming services if you DJ with streaming services. And now all of these beautiful lights and the whole controller, the whole controller is being powered by your iPad. So definitely get one of these that will charge your iPad and make sure that you test it out that it will be charging more than the battery you're using because some chargers and some adapters will say that it's charging and the charging will be up over there and it is charging, but it's charging less than the power that you're using. So eventually the battery will run out. It will last longer, but it'll eventually run out. So get a good adapter that you know will be able to charge your iPad and, and keep this device powered while you're DJing. Tip number four is to invest in a case. There are a lot of different options and they're not expensive. And the case, uh, obviously it protects it from getting damaged. But the most important thing is it has storage. Make sure you get one with storage. So now if I'm DJing with this controller, all I have to do is take this case because I have everything that I will need to DJ with this controller. I got the adapter. I got the audio cable. I got some earbuds if I forget my regular headphones. And I even have even have a decent iPad stand. So instead of instead of having to get your controller, get all the wires and everything, I always keep this case loaded with the controller inside, ready to go, and you just grab the controller and you're ready to DJ. And a bonus tip, this is really cool. It's kind of a hidden feature. If you plug this controller into the, the wall and not into a device such as a laptop, a phone, or iPad, it will eventually start doing like a little light show around here on the pads. So check it out right there. 
and it will stay like that until you unplug it. It's kind of like a hidden feature. So if you like to keep this on the wall like me and display it, or you just want to show someone a trick, that is a trick right there. And if you guys want to learn my full tutorial on how to map this awesome controller, check out this video over here.